there, and welcome to Crafty Kathy, where we're all about love, laughs, and DIYs. Hey, if you're new here, welcome, and let me introduce myself. My name is Crafty Kathy, and I am tickled pink that you're here with me today. I hope you will consider sticking around and subscribing and becoming a part of our family. And don't forget to give me a big thumbs up if you like this video. Today, I've got some beautiful French farmhouse decor for you. We are going to paint and stain some mason jars and find the very best technique to do that. We're going to decoupage and we're also going to do all kinds of DIYs along the way. Now, these are going to be beautiful for Valentine's Day and the spring. It's going to be here before we know it. So let's jump right in. For the first DIY, we're going to start painting our mason jars. Now, it doesn't matter what type of mason jar you have or any glass jar, you're going to have to clean it inside and out with alcohol. You just wipe it down with a paper towel really good and it gets any smudges or prints off. Now, I've heard some people say that chalk paint is the very best way to paint these. Some say acrylic and I even have a special paint that is just for glass. So I thought what we would do is try out a bunch of different methods so we can find out for ourselves which one is the best way to paint a mason jar. So after I got everything cleaned up with the alcohol, I'm going to take the Home Decor brand chalk paint in the color Sheepskin. It's kind of an ivory color and it's already chalk paint, but I wanted mine to be just a tad bit thicker. And so I'm going to add Johnson & Johnson's talc. It can't be the regular baby powder. It has to be the baby powder with the talc in it. Somebody said that you can't order this in the United States anymore. I'm not really sure. I ordered mine off of Amazon and it's in my Amazon store in case you want some. So basically all I'm doing is taking regular old chalk paint and thickening it up just a little bit. And I'm going to give this jar two coats. I'm actually going to give everything two coats, but I'm only going to show you one of each so I don't bore you to death. There's my first mason jar. The second one that I'm going to paint is just a small jar that I got from the Dollar Tree. It's not a mason jar, but it's a little glass jar and I think it's really pretty. I like the style of it. I'm just going to quickly paint through each of the mason jars for the sake of time. That way we can get to the end result and find out which is the best method for painting our jars. Also, we have some DIYs that we're going to be doing with these different jars. After we finish up with the chalk paint, our very next DIY is going to be trying out an acrylic paint called Treasured Gold. It's made by Folk Art and the color is rose gold. It is this beautiful metallic rose gold color and it took two coats to cover this jar and this is just a little vase that I got from the thrift store for like 50 cents and I was really impressed with this paint. The way that it went on was very smooth and I like to use these smaller paint brushes that have a flat end because I just think that the paint goes on smoother and it just has a better glide factor. For the third mason jar, we're gonna use an apple barrel paint. An apple barrel comes from Walmart. We're gonna use the color called khaki, which as you see is a pretty warm brown color. And it's an acrylic paint. Now, once again, I was pretty impressed. This is the first time that I've used just regular old acrylic paint on a mason jar. And it too was very fluid, very easy. It wasn't thick. It just had a smooth glideability. And I hope that makes sense. Basically, I mean, it just glides across the glass really smooth and easy. I had a lot of that chalk paint left over that I started with. And that is my main color scheme that I wanted. It's that home decor sheepskin. It's kind of an ivory color. And so I'm just painting this jar with that. It's nothing new. I just had some extra left over and I wanted this jar that color. 
The next paint that we're going to use is one that is called enamels. It's made by Folk Art, and this is the one that claims that is specifically for glass. It's not exactly the color that I was wanting or goes with my scheme, but it's the only color in this type of paint that I had, and I wanted to give it a whirl since it said it was for glass. It was a glossy texture, and it did not go on the way that the other acrylic paints did. It didn't have that smooth glide factor, and it took a total of four coats. The next one that I have is this huge glass pickle jar. Now, you know that these are beautiful in any type of farmhouse decor. And so I took this one out and I used my Rust-Oleum two times spray paint in matte white and I gave it about two or three coats. I like using spray paint on glass. I like the technique as long as you don't get too close or try to put on too much at one time because you will get drips and it will ruin your whole project. So as long as you do it in small intervals and do it in about three different coats, it's gonna turn out really nice. Now, before we move on to the next part and we start staining our mason jars, I just wanted to remind you, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please hit that little red subscribe button and become a part of our family. We would love to have you. And don't forget to give me a big thumbs up because it really helps my channel on YouTube. Before we move on with the video, I just want to say thank you to a company called LifeWit. They sent me this adorable collapsible hamper that is on the front of my table. And they also sent me this cool memory foam pillow. Now this memory foam pillow is very different because you can fill it up to whatever your comfort level is. It was so easy to open. All you had to do was just open it up. It has a zipper on the side. I opened the zipper and it comes with this little blue bag of your memory foam. That way you can add as much as you want to your pillow. Say goodbye to the one size fits all pillows. In the past, I've always had to buy like an extra firm, soft or medium pillow. But if you buy the Life Whip pillow, you can fill it to your comfort level. And for me, I like that I had that control. My pillow's not too hard and it's not too soft. It's kind of right in the middle where I like it. It was easy to put together and I sat there and squished that thing for 10 minutes because it was so soft and fluffy. Now I'm gonna leave their information in the box below so that you guys can go get some of these products on your own and you're gonna love it. Now I'm gonna take this hamper and put a little farmhouse spin on it. I bought these Prima Design transfers and it's got a cow on it and it says farm fresh and a little barn. So all you have to do is cut out the transfers that you want and then you peel off the backing and you lay it down where you want it and you don't move it at all. And then you use the little tool that they give you and kind of scrape over it. And then you're gonna pull that top piece off and it's gonna look like it's just part of the original hamper. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing to the picture of the barn on the top. And guys, this hamper is so adorable and now it perfectly matches everything in my house, which is farmhouse. And I am up doing a lot of stuff in my house and changing things around. I just redid my bathroom and these are actually my colors and my style. So I'm loving this. And this is so much better than an old laundry basket because I have to lug our laundry up and down a spiral staircase. So I'm happy. All right, the next one is just gonna be a quick little DIY. I bought this gorgeous lantern at Discovery Outlet for $2.99. And it has a little glass votive inside of it where you put your candle. All I'm doing is taking a candle, and I'm sorry that it's not exactly in frame, but I'm just rubbing the wax all around the ornate design that's on this candle. And I love anything that has that ornate design to it. It's so pretty. I painted over it one time with my sheepskin chalk paint, and this is the result. All you do is take your little scraper or a scraping tool and go over it, and anywhere where you have rubbed that candle wax is going to be pulled up, and it's a beautiful chippy look. Now we're going to take a couple of our mason jars and do a little deco podging. I've got these two napkins with beautiful French farmhouse chickens on them, and you have to cut out 
the design that you want. And what I do is put water on a small paintbrush and I go around the edges and then pull it away with my finger. You want to pull apart your edges in that way because it just makes it look like it's a part of the glass. If you use a perfectly square napkin, it's going to look funny and it never looks right, but I find this is the best way to do it. And if you accidentally rip your napkin a little bit, it's no problem. Once that Mod Podge hits it, you can actually put it back together and you can't even tell. I guess the best way to describe what I'm talking about is to show you right here. As you see, I only have the wording and the chicken. That's pretty much the main image and that's all I need. And I'm going to put it on that one mason jar that I painted khaki with the apple barrel paint. This is probably my favorite. I like this one over the chalk paint. That's just my preference. I think the acrylic paint did much better. All I'm gonna do is just put down some Mod Podge and I lay my napkin down. I try to hit right in the center of that napkin to start off. And then I go over the sides. First, I put down a thin layer underneath the design. Then I lay the design down and add the Mod Podge to the top and just kind of smooth it out as I go. I also found that it's imperative to use some type of saran wrap or plastic wrap so that you will not have wrinkles. You just lay it down and make sure there's no wrinkles in that saran wrap and just kind of run your finger around in a circle and it's almost like the heat from your body will, will iron out any wrinkles that might be in that picture and it turns out perfect every time. But you have to go very slow. This is sped up greatly and it's still taking a bit because I really take my time on these. The only downfall is on the back of this jar, it scratched off the paint where I had laid it on the table when I was putting the napkin on. But that's really no big deal to me. All I gotta do is just repaint that part so I guess the moral of the story is, if you're not gonna decoupage and you're going to paint your mason jar with acrylic paint, just go ahead and put some Mod Podge over it to cover and seal that paint. I have one more napkin that I'm going to put on and I'm going to put this one on one of the mason jars that has the chalk paint. And so I just cut out basically the main shape, which is that chicken, and I wanted him standing on that post. So I cut that whole little piece out. And for whatever reason, I didn't show myself putting the Mod Podge on, but I did the exact same thing. I used my saran wrap, so I did not get any wrinkles. And this one turned out just as beautiful as the first. On the next one, we're going to use some of my IOD stamps. I have been wanting these stamps for the longest time. This is the very first time that I have ever used these. And I'm trying to do a little bit of different type of DIYs in case you guys didn't notice. Because I feel like a lot of us do the Dollar Tree DIYs and the stuff. And it just gets so repetitive. People seem like they're doing the same thing. And I want to do something different and give y'all something that maybe you haven't seen so much of. So anyways, you just take your stamp. And I'm, after I had sanded it down a little bit... Um, I put it on my ink pad and I went down and the first time I did it, I moved it around too much. Now I'm learning and I'm getting better, but my first time was not very good. You can actually see me sitting here when I pull it up thinking about it, tapping my fingers because I was so upset. I've waited for these stamps for so long. 
That's my first attempt, but here's my second attempt, and that looks so much better. I can always just spray back over the one that I didn't like. Now, I took the lids outside to all my mason jars and painted them black. And I just styled this with a little jute twine at the top. I hope you guys like it. Throughout this video, my point is to show you the different ways that you can paint these mason jars, which ways look best, and then of course I want to put a little spin on it and show you how I like to decorate with them. The next one is going to be real quick and easy. I'm just going to take a couple of the terracotta pots that come from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to dry brush them. Just run a little bit of that sheepskin color paint over them. And when I say I was using a dry brush, I mean there was barely any paint whatsoever on my brush. So I just used the front side and put my stamp on. Then I flipped the little pot over and I did the other side. And then I had these little bitty tiny ones that my husband found at a thrift store. There was about 10 of them in a pack and they're so tiny that your thumbs can fit in them. They are the cutest things and I distressed two small ones and left one as is because I had a certain way I wanted to display these. And here in just a moment, I'm going to show you guys how I made these little moss balls. The next one is a little hanging jar, and I painted it sheepskin. And I'm just going to simply put a stamp on it. And as you see, as I go along, I keep getting better and better. This little vase has a hanger on the top, so I simply clamped it back in place, and I displayed it with some flowers and a cute little bird from the Dollar Tree. Now this one is so pretty, I think. As you see, the more that I practice with these stamps, the better off I'm getting. The next one is a little apothecary jar that came from the Dollar Tree and it has a little black metal top on it. I took some of the French writing that came off one of the transfer sheets from Dollar Tree, the one that says spring on it, and I picked one that says carte postale, and I thought that was cute. And I made just a simple little ribbon from like a ticking ribbon, and I put the ribbon around the jar, and that was it. These jars are so cute in bathrooms, and for some reason I absolutely love them, and I can't find them in my store much anymore. Let me know in the comments if any of y'all see them anymore or maybe if it was just a seasonal thing. Look at the little birdie. He's sitting there waiting for spring too. This is the one that was for glass or it said it's for glass. As you see, it has a glossy finish and it turned out okay. The only reason I can figure that they said that it's for glass is because it won't chip off as easily. Now, it is an acrylic paint. It's made by folk art, but I did not like this paint whatsoever. A lot of it was probably the color, but you could also see lines in it and the texture. You know what I mean? I just didn't like it. So I took my truffle chalk paint from Waverly, good old faithful, and I'm just going to give it one coat so I can cover this up. And who else is thinking of Nestle Quick or YooHoo whenever I'm painting this? Now be honest, I got a hankering for some chalky milky. I chose my stamp and it said something about marmalade and I just put it right across the top and pressed down for just a moment and I find that it's so much better that way. And then I took some of my DIY white wax and just kind of rubbed it all over it with a paper towel and then you rub it back off and it leaves kind of like a little bit of a white texture on it and it just gives it, I don't know, it's just a little flare and I like that. And I'm going to use another transfer. This one is from the little transfer pack from the Dollar Tree that says spring on it. And it says welcome sunshine. And I just think that this one's adorable. And I just tied some jute twine around the top. 
So I'm saving the best for last or my favorite. That is that rose gold metallic color by Treasured Folk Art. I just absolutely love the way that this one turned out. It was two coats and it went on smooth. It's beautiful. I just love the color. And I just fashioned this by putting a stamp on it. And then I also tied one of the little pieces of ribbon that's from the Dollar Tree, the kind that looks like the Victorian lace because that is my favorite that Dollar Tree has. And I took a little sole of flower and popped it on the side. For Valentine's Day, this is how I like to decorate my home. That way it's not so cutesy and red and pink and white. I like those colors too, but I love the Victorian lace and French farmhouse. So out of all the different ways that we've painted mason jars so far, let me know in the comments which one your favorite is. For me, it has to be the acrylic paint. It was just so easy to use, and if it's a bigger piece, I would go with spray paint. Now the next one is going to be short and sweet. I picked up this beautiful candlestick from the thrift store. It had some original rust on it, so I went all over it with the candle anywhere where I wanted it to have a chippy look. And I used that Home Decor Sheepskin brand paint. I really sped this up because I know that you guys know how to paint. And so I just gave it one coat all over and then I just used my little Cricut tool to kind of chip it off or go over it, like scrape it. You can even use a credit card, you know, and just scrape it. And anywhere where that wax touched, it will pull that paint up and it just gives the most perfect chippy look. I will never go back to just sanding only. I might sand occasionally, but this is definitely gonna be my new way of distressing everything because it turns out so pretty. Instead of putting the traditional candle on the top, I'm going to display mine with these moss balls, and I'm about to show you how to make them. I think they're so pretty, and they're just a timeless beauty, and they're very French farmhouse and very chic, but look how beautiful this candlestick turned out and how chippy and perfect. If y'all are still hanging on through this video, I just want to say thank you. I know that there's been a lot of information given in this video, a lot of different DIYs, and thank y'all for holding on through all my craziness. I just had a lot of stuff I wanted to show you. So let's move on to the next one. Now, this is simply how I made the moss balls. They're very easy to make. At the thrift store, I found this I guess it's like a twig ball, I guess you could call it. I really don't know what else to call it. A stick ball? I don't know. So I just used my Loctite spray adhesive, and where I would spray, I would simply just put some of that moss on it and then kind of press down with my hands. And then when I finished, I went all the way around the moss ball. Then when I was totally done, I gave it a good spray, almost like a hairspray, so we could spray it and it would stay on there. And I used my hands to kind of press it in so it would hold on and not fall off. I made that on this twig ball and I also had some styrofoam round balls that I made it on. And you do the same technique. You spray your adhesive and just press it on. And I think it turned out beautiful. On the next one, I don't even know if I would call it a DIY. I just found this beautiful little candle stand, and I love, love, love candle stands and candlesticks from the thrift store. And I thought it was so beautiful because it had all this ornate design. And you know, anytime that I distress something that has that ornate design, it just brings it out and it's so beautiful. I just lightly dry brushed all over the surface of this. And by dry brushing, I mean I literally had next to nothing of paint left on my brush. Then I just used my little Cricut tool to kind of chip it up a little bit. And ah, oh, magic.
Now this last part is gonna go really fast and it's where we're gonna stain a couple of our mason jars and bottles. I have five different bottles or jars that came from the thrift store and they're just different kinds. I absolutely love this one. I think it looks like a little shabby chic bottle. So what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of Mod Podge in a bowl and the first thing that I was gonna try was some blue food coloring. But the only blue food coloring I had was this kind that you use for cookies and it was like a oil-based gel. And I added a little bit of water to it and I couldn't figure out why it wasn't, you know, mixing up really well and it's because it was oil. If it was just drops, I think it would have been better, but I thought, oh well, I've mixed it up. We're gonna try this and see what happens. The worst thing that could happen is it, it's a big flop, you know? So basically you just put it in your jar and then you just roll it around and kind of tilt it downward so it will flow down to the end and then you get the excess out. When the excess comes out, you flip it upside down there and let it kind of drain on something. And I noticed when the jar had drained down that since it was oil, it was still kind of not doing right. So I took a few drops of my yellow food dye. It wasn't a gel base, it was just regular because yellow and blue make green. And so I thought maybe I could kind of swirl it together and either get like a pattern that would be blue and green or maybe just all green. And so I let all of that drain down to the bottom and I kept it upside down so that it could dry. The next one that I'm gonna do is this paint called Color Shift, and it's called Violet Flash. It's kind of a metallic-y purple, I guess you could call it, and they say that the color kind of shifts and it's got different colors in it, which I thought that this would be pretty interesting. I just added a little bit of it to my bowl and a little bit of Mod Podge and stirred it around, and we are going to pour this inside that one beautiful vase that's already French Farmhouse and so pretty because I thought that it would make a beautiful combination. Now, it turned out beautiful in and of itself, but when I get finished with all these, I'm going to put them in, in a 275 degree oven for about 45 minutes to an hour and see what I come up with. Now, this time I'm just gonna try regular acrylic paint. It's called Lullaby Blue. I added some of that and then some Mod Podge and we're gonna try it in our little baby jar. On the next one, I'm going to use what's left of that Lullaby Blue color and add a little bit of this Aqua color from the Color Shift line. And I just mixed it in and it became this beautiful French farmhouse like aquamarine kind of color that's so pretty and very popular in the French farmhouse. And I'm going to put that in my favorite little jar and let the excess leak out of that. Now it's time to take these inside and put them in the oven and I put them in there for an hour at 275. And the purple one, I eventually had to flip it upside down because it wasn't doing right, turned right side up. So after an hour's time, I got a beautiful presentation. This is how they turned out. This is everything when I was finished. This is the little baby jar that had the regular acrylic paint this one is a stain that was nothing more than green food coloring in Mod Podge. This one was the color shift in Mod Podge. And once it dried, you could actually see that there was a silhouette of another bottle inside this bottle. It was pretty cool. And then my favorite is this blue color, which is the lullaby color mixed with the color shift. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and got some good French farmhouse inspiration and maybe learned something that you didn't know before. I learned that spray painting is my favorite way to go when you're using a bigger object and the acrylic paint is right underneath it, followed by the chalk paint, and I 
absolutely fell in love with that rose gold. And if you guys stayed to the end of this video, you are my champions. Thank you so much. I know it was a lot of info, and I love you guys. Now, y'all better stay tuned for them bloopers. Well, ladies and gents, this is Crafty Bobby Joe, and I'm so glad that you came here to my show to come see me. Guys, I'm sorry I haven't been around much, but guess what? I found me a bow. I sure did. He come from up the holler. His name's Buford, and oh my gosh, he's just got the prettiest brown eyes I have ever seen in my life. And mama says that he's going to break my heart. But I don't think so. Because he's just too good looking to do me wrong. Bobby Joe, I have done told you time and time again, honey, you've just got a tender heart. Now the way that you care for everybody else's youngins and all them critters that run around in these here Tennessee hills, you even bring rattlesnakes back to help. You just got a tender way about you, darling. And that's all I'm saying is I'm afraid you're going to get your heart broke. You know old Buford was at the BFW with Sally Ann, Gladys and Homer's daughter. It was just last week they had some kind of New Year's Eve fiasco trying to act like they were high society. And guess who else was there? Your cousin Kathy. She seen it. You can ask her. He's just going to do you wrong. Just for the record, I have never went out with that old trashy Sally Ann. Everybody knows what kind of woman she is. <sighs> And she just ain't the kind of woman I want in my life. I want a real woman. I want a Bobby Joe. I want somebody that's going places. <laughs> oh, Mama. I just don't think that he could ever do me wrong. Just look in his eyes. There's nothing but good intentions hiding behind them big old eyeballs of his. You know that he's just the sweetest thing that could ever come into my life. And how dare you try to hurt me and break us up before we even get started down our long path of love. You know, Ethel, you can say what you want to about me and the decisions that I've made in my love life in the past. But I think you just need to leave Bobby Joe alone and just let her be. I mean, everybody gets their heart broken. You can't protect her. And plus, it would be one mouth less to feed in our house. Gladys, for Pete's sake, hush your mouth! Nobody asked you. Now, Bobby Joe, you listen to me right now. If I have to, I'll go out there and get that chain off of that coon hound and I will put it around you, girl. I basically forbid you to see that boy. I just know he's got bad intentions and he's going to hurt you. I can see that in his eyes. Well, Mama, you might as well just give up. I guess you'll just have to put that chain around me because Buford's done asked me to marry him. Don't look at me. I figured it was darn near time. We've been dating three days now. I mean... What's the chances of falling in love with a beauty like Bobby Joe? And right before she makes it to Hollywood and hits it on the big time. So me and her are planning on betrothing and moving off to California. And we'll be seeing you there. If you don't like it, don't come to the wedding. Well, actually, I can't afford a wedding. But don't come to the courthouse if you don't like it. That's the Tennessee way. Well, kids... Looks like you done made your mind up. There ain't nothing I can do. So you go on, Bobby Joe. You go on and you leave me. And your twin sister, Jojo, I can't believe you're doing this to us. 
but since you're going to California, you know, I will be visiting because I will make sure that he does you right. You know, I just don't know what to do. I'd rather break my arm than talk about anybody in any kind of negative way. I would go talk to my cousin Kathy down the holler, but she's so tied up in that YouTube stuff, trying to teach people how to paint a mason jar. Everybody knows that mason jars are for drinking sweet tea out of. I mean, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. Who would do something like that? And she's talking about French farmhouse. I don't know, but I will let you know what comes of this because that Bobby Joe, she will not break my heart. Mama, it's okay. It's gonna be all right. On account of I know that it's right before Valentine's Day. I mean, what other sign from the Lord do I need? He came along right in the nick of time. Boy, right when I thought I would never find my bow. And just imagine, I was about to run off and leave him. So ladies and gentlemen, listen up. If y'all know where the courthouse is in Chattanooga, Tennessee, we're gonna get hitched there, and it's gonna be great. I'm inviting all of y'all. <laughs> I'm gonna be a beautiful bride. Well, Sabby, what do you think about all that? It's kind of what I thought, too. But on our channel, we got love and laughs and DIYs. We got love and laughs and DIYs. We got some love and laughs and DIYs. We got love and laughs and DIYs. Yeah. Woohoo, baby. Yeah. We love y'all.